Hello everybody and welcome to another video. Today Entanglement goes live, the latest patch of Guild Wars 2 and the second patch of Season 2's Living World. Uh, this patch includes a bunch more story to continue on the Mordremoth arc, as well as adding a bunch of new playable terrain to the game. It doesn't technically add a new map to the game like last update did where it added Drytop, instead it's just expanded on the size of Drytop quite significantly. In fact, in terms of playable area, it's pretty easy to see that this patch has made Tyria bigger than the last patch did. Uh, dry top is over double the size it was before and there's plenty of story and events to go with it in terms of mechanics for the patch They haven't actually introduced that much new stuff They have simply expanded on some of the core groundwork they laid with the beginning of dry top So I'm gonna talk to you guys about it today We'll go over some patch notes and some extra stuff that's changed with the black line store and uh, just talk about in general how good the patch is so first with the Black Lion stuff, there's a bunch of new Black Lion weapon skins added to the game called the Ley Line Weapons. As ever, there seem to be some good skins and some bad skins. If you're an Assyrian player like me, you probably won't care so much anyway because people don't tend to see. But yeah, it's been a little while since we've had some new Black Lion weapons. Uh, maybe they've been a little bit overdue. There's also a new mini called the Mini Chicanado, which hopefully I'll have footage for you guys of. And there is a new finisher also, which should be there too. This is the Ley Line finisher. And finally, as they often do now, they've introduced three new hairstyles, which are available exclusively exclusively from self-style hair kits or total makeover kits and that's for uh, three new hairstyles for each race and each gender. So just like before I've had a chance to play this patch a little early, get a feel for it and tell you guys my experience. Well I will say I'm not going to spoil anything at all in this video. I didn't last week either but because my video came up very quickly a lot of people were like oh no there might be spoilers here. There weren't. Don't worry I'm not going to spoil anything. I did in fact this time attempt to play the story early however because of the client I was playing on it was a little bit buggy and when the story progressed to a certain point which exists outside of the new map. Unfortunately, I couldn't continue anymore. I'm sure there won't be a problem once the uh, story goes live, so I'm still pretty much as in the dark as you guys are, just a little bit further ahead. The patch basically opens up with expanding dry top, but there's only one way to get to the new areas of dry top. They're positioned like higher than the lowland areas we've already been introduced to, and the only way to get there is through the back of a certain someone's house you got to enter at the end of the last story. So I'm choosing my words very carefully here not to spoil for you. Basically there is a secret exit out of the back of that area that takes you into a cave system. The cave system takes you out into the new regions of the map. Uh, it's funny and I've got some other videos going up where I do a nice big tour of this map. It's got commentary this time so you guys can feel free to check that out. It's over an hour long exploring all the new areas doing map completion. But it's funny and I'll mention it over there too but as you experience this new area it's constantly triggering story journal stuff as you explore so you might be wandering around looking for lost coins which is one of the new achievements that's been added and end up finding that you're progressing your story a bit more the new sections of dry top are far more linear than the previous ones we saw um, basically you're guided along a very specific route this doesn't necessarily mean that that's a bad thing as you're going through this rather linear route through certain gorges through certain chasms through then an oasis across a vine bridge into another dry arid plain and then finally a very deep cave as you're traveling through this rather linear progression you'll also find there's lots of different directions you can go uh, where you'll find hidden things like map completion stuff lost coins and bonus dynamic events the uh, locked chests that we're already familiar with that are revealed during sandstorms in regular dry top make an appearance here too as I said at the start of the video they have only expanded on mechanics introduced in dry top that big meta event where a sandstorm descends over the map every now and then is still present in the new areas and what this means is now there's more than one sandstorm in the map one moment you might be walking through what are some incredibly beautiful areas with lots of verticality should be plenty of footage in the background of it and the next minute it will be completely obscured by overpowering sandstorms that make it difficult to see where you're going uh, they have expanded on the sandstorm idea and that now it doesn't just reveal locked chests but there is also a legendary giant foe in one of the new desert regions that you can try to fight with but will only be there while the sandstorm is raging. Once the sandstorm ends, the enemies you find there changes completely and instead it's filled with uh, worms, perhaps some mowers and the odd inquest here or there. Uh, as I was playing this alone, I unfortunately couldn't see what happened if you managed to kill the giant, but I would presume it's just a good reward as killing many of the champions in regular dry top would be too. Again, with the events, they are simply building on mechanics, so every time you complete one, uh, it will 
will push the favor of the Zephyrites up and allow you to purchase new stuff from the Zephyrite merchants. You can now go all the way up to tier 5 with the Zephyrite merchants and this makes sense since the map is now bigger, there are more events for players to complete and you can push the tiers up quicker in theory. I will add, I don't believe all of Dry Top has been revealed to us. I think next patch will probably completely finish the map off uh, and add a bunch more stuff before then the patch after that maybe we go to a totally new map. I will say, even though these two patches uh, expanding dry top for us have been kind of small, um, the sheer amount of stuff there is to play in these maps still makes it feel like they're much bigger than say anywhere in Or was. Or yes, it may cover a large chunk of the map, but you can walk across those largely empty fields very fast, maybe gather something every now and then and skip a bunch of mobs. Dry top is smaller but also has many more winding passageways, things to interact with, events firing off and hidden achievements to get and that I feel makes the map much stronger than many other places in Guild Wars 2 despite its somewhat smaller size. Just like last patch, I mentioned achievements very briefly there, just like last patch, uh, there are a couple of achievements that have been added for exploration of the new areas, but the majority of the new achievements are going to be optional things you can do when replaying the story later, um, difficult challenges. Honestly, I didn't get to play much of last patch, and I don't have much experience of those achievements yet, so I can't tell you how much they differ on this patch, especially considering I didn't finish it, but I would assume they'd be of around about the same quality and difficulty. There have been some minor changes to regular dry top. The town of Prosperity in particular has fallen under attack. There are now vines everywhere that have killed many of the inhabitants of that town. And there is indeed a big event there too where you the players can try and fight back the corruption that has spread to this mining town. But you can never save it completely. Just push back some of the monsters that are there and make it relatively safe to walk around in. The only other real change that I noticed to the regular map is three of the characters from the Dermond Priory we could speak to were once found near a refugee campsite for the Zephyrites, they have moved on. Their whole job is to explore the Maguma jungle and so now they are deeper into the new map, they have new things to say to you and they are living amongst centaurs. So this is a new big thing with this area. Uh, we haven't seen any centaurs of the Maguma jungle so far in Guild Wars 2. This is our first experience with that tribe and unlike other centaurs, these ones are non-hostile. You can actually speak to these centaurs, they preach peace, they preach uh, caring for anyone that comes around them, whether they're centaur or not, and they are in particular helping out many of the injured Zephyrites. So that's cool, I guess they'll come into the story a little bit more as things progress, but so far they're just friendly NPCs and a little bit of flavour for the new areas. The Zephyrites maintain an influence on this patch too. Um, basically, you go through these big rocky hills and then loop back down to an area very close to where we were before, except you're much higher up on top of a huge cliff. And up here, you'll see, if you were to follow the Zephyrites' flight trajectory, um, another ship has crash-landed that you now find. So, previous patch, we found a big crash site. Well, this is another crash site. More victims of the saboteur that brought them down from the sky. So, there are more Zephyrites you can speak to, even though, in theory, we are deeper in Magoo and further away from civilization, which I thought was a really nice touch. The uh, the map in general leads you to a large cave that, it, because of spoilers, I don't want to talk to you guys too much about, but there's some very interesting lore things in there, and again, great assets and design. One thing I will applaud ArenaNet for with these new areas are that they are never really reusing assets. We've had caves in Guild Wars 2 before many times, but this one looks very different to any we've explored before. They've not been scared to make a whole bunch of new textures and models and assets that really makes it feel like we are somewhere very different in a totally alien place. Sound design is phenomenal again and if you watch my tour videos you'll get to experience that firsthand and overall I think the quality has not diminished at all even though this patch was I guess created by a different team of devs entirely as they often do with the living world they have different packets of devs working on different things there is one new mechanic added which involves a new thing that can drop from the buried lock chests which reveal themselves to you during sandstorms you can find ambrite insects by taking them to a new Asuran vendor who's living with some of these uh, centaurs, there is a way to turn these into weapons. I haven't gone through the full process myself, but I believe these will probably have the new stat set on them, or if not, even a new skin. They do look pretty cool and of exotic quality at the very least. So that's something new that they've added to the area, but mostly it's just on theme with the stuff we saw previously in Dry Top. As far as lore is concerned, beyond story, there seem to be a lot of hints 
Um, at things to do with Alona that are very exciting. There's more elaboration on the centaurs and then more parallels between the centaurs we find here and some of the centaurs we found in Alona. And even there are references to old Guild Wars 1 things people will be very happy to see. For example, you can read very early on in the patch a note written by Nicholas Sanford. This was an old character in Guild Wars 1 who would explore the whole world and if you the players found where he was hiding each week in real life, um, you could trade various wares with him for interesting items. He has a journal about what Drytop was like many years ago and how it may have changed in Guild Wars 2. Uh, the last thing really to talk about the patch seems like a big shift game-wide. Not all of the story takes place in the new map, and the devs seem to be doing something very interesting with waypoints. This had been uh, seeded out there and hinted out there over the course of last week, where regular waypoints in regular Tyria, nothing to do with Drytop, are being attacked by tendrils, by Mordremoth, it would seem. And this seems to be something ArenaNet are expanding on more and more. The new area of the map is also very light on waypoints. It seems that the devs are going to reduce the density of waypoints there in the game and some of them are even being removed completely. If this continues it will affect the way we play just regular Guild Wars 2 as well as the new content. Speaking of Morgamoth, there are a bunch of new enemies you can fight in this patch. As Morgamoth's influence grows and his force and his strength seems to grow, uh, there are a new variety of husks you can fight. Some very uh, Ebolga looking like creatures, plant creatures basically. A new variety of Thornwolf and some extra stuff too that have been introduced. So Mordremoth is definitely looking a bit more threatening. And overall, I'm very pleased with the patch. It's definitely a very different experience to what we had in Living World before. They've done a nice mix of adding new stuff, but also changing existing stuff as the Living World was supposed to do. And uh, I've had an awful lot of fun. The patch should be live right now. I'm not allowed to upload this video until it's live. So you can check it out for yourself now, guys, if you like. Or I do have this tour, if you can't play the game right now, about an hour's worth of just exploring the new map, catching everything, getting map completion. I hope you enjoy it. And let me know what you think of this patch. Is it still up to standard? Um, for me, I'm completely blown away still. Uh, but we'll have to see how the community reacts to it. Last week, there was a bit more negative reaction than I was expecting about the size of the map, which I think is foolish, really foolish, because it's really not about how big it is, is it? It's about how much content they give you, and they're giving us an awful lot. Anyway, cheers, guys. Thanks very much for watching. I'll see you next time.